What's going on everybody? C4 here today and welcome to the debut episode of the Philadelphia Eagles Madden 18 Connected Franchise Mode as part of the Connected Franchise Universe. You know what I'm talking about. Earlier today we released an NCAA 14 video that featured every rookie that you're going to be seeing in the draft classes that we use here in this Eagles save. I think it's very exciting, very different. No one else is doing that. I think it's an immersive universe. It takes a lot of time on my end, but I really do hope you guys enjoy because I love doing it. So I hope the feedback is good. I've seen only initial at the first hour or so of feedback on the NCAA video, and it looks really, really positive. So I'm very happy, very hyped to see that. So why not start the Philadelphia Eagles Connected Franchise Mode today? I was thinking about doing it during the EA Access 10 hours, but I figured it might be better to wait and I started offline, and Moonlight Swami, who is, I would say, probably my most trusted source when it comes to between, like, a YouTuber and an EA, kind of the middleman, he basically made a tweet and was talking to me on Twitter that doing an online connected franchise mode is going to be the way to go. I have never done on, I've never even touched it. I've always been an offline guy. I like to rely on my console, but it seems like patches and tuning updates like that are going to be first and foremost for online. And no one knows when the patches are officially going to work for the offline mode. So because of that, and because last year we started the Eagles Connected Franchise mode so early. And all the bugs, we had to just fight through them because there's no patch. I'm going to gamble that the internet and the servers will hold up and playing online will work out. And that's what I've been telling people that have been hitting me up on Twitter asking for suggestions. So here we are. With the Philadelphia Eagles, I'm planning on just for today, this opening episode, there's going to be probably three Connected Franchise Universe episodes a week, combination of NCAA and uh, and the Philadelphia Eagles. We're just going to be doing a full summary of the franchise mode here today of just the preseason. I figure it's a nice little starter episode. We already kind of did a mock one, uh, which uploaded like last week that I did during EA Access when I messed up and did offline stuff. And so many people were upset that I was tinkering with the ratings. They're like, I could not believe it. I, for, for, for how many people, like thousands of you that downloaded my rosters, you, you think that I'd try to do it fair, but no. But no, rabbit dogs. So I will say I've modified ratings in here. Not the ones that were common enemies. From the first one where I made Carson Wentz, I gave him quick development trade. He still has normal, and I figure we'll ball up with Wentz and get that superstar dev trade all along and all that stuff. We left Jalen Mills the same. We left Jordan Hicks the same. Uh, even the overrated ratings on my Eagles, especially guys like Brandon Cooks. Or not Brandon Cooks, Brandon Graham, sorry. Brandon Graham. We got um, Brent Selleck. Those are, those are two that off the top of my head. Even like, yeah, Vinnie Curry and stuff like that. Hi, we're leaving them as base, but I will tell you guys something that I thought was a glitch, but I guess uh, John White, who's like the lead of Kenka Franchise Mode, came out and said it's it's what they're doing in online, is the wide receiver ratings are absolutely horrendous. Uh, Matt Collins, for example, he's a 71. His base rating is a 70 to 71, depending on you know what your game's feeling like starting up with. Um, he started out with like a 58 overall rating, so I found out that all of the rookie wide receiver ratings are terribly off. I mean, some of these ones here for the wide receivers are off, like Torrey Smith. If you do an offline, for some reason, his overall is like a 76 or something like that. But 74 is not too bad. But he said, basically, they're trying to change the way they assess the wide receiver position overall. And they're going to try to give a more realistic approach. But I feel like, for example, Shelton Gibson's a 63, 64. I didn't touch him or anything. He's a 55. So the only thing I've done was I went through legitimate draft picks at the wide receiver spot. Rookies. Cooper Cup. Uh, we did... Um, D.D. Westbrook, we gave him a little bit of a bump. Like, guys like that, I, they're in the 50s and low 60s. It makes absolutely no sense for them to be there. I have touched on all the rookie wide receivers and giving them, as close as I can without giving their stats too juiced up, their base overall rating. So I'm going to say for you guys, just a little pointer, little tips and tricks. If you're doing online, which is what trusted sources are saying to do, and I'm, I'm jumping in as a guy that I've only ever done offline. So if you do the cloud franchise only modification you should do is look at all the rookie wide receivers on every single team and try to get them as close as possible to their base rating because I think it's a little too extreme if you will but hell that's just my personal preference well here we're ready to rock and roll here we got the Philadelphia Eagles we're looking great we're not going to do a big roster dive yet we'll do that week four of the preseason where we do our cuts but right now we know company here looking good hopefully we can replicate the Philadelphia Eagles preseason and well they're only sitting at one and one we've only played the Packers and the Bills what we're going to do is we're just going to sim those games and we'll take a quick look at the box scores and then all that stuff and get ready for the official debut of the season in episode two of the connected franchise mode. So let's jump in 
to this opening game against Green Bay Packers and take a look and analyze the box. All right, in the opener against Green Bay, where in real life we faltered, we dominated over 400 total yards of offense in a 28 to 17 victory. That's more so just break down the Eagles here. Beast Foles having one hell of a performance. Looking like Chip Kelly dialing back the clock. 198 yards, roughly 200 yards, and a touchdown on the day. Carson Wentz on his drive. I'll take that. No interceptions. Clean game. No Matt McGloin is always a good thing. Darius Sproles had 81 yards. Danelle Pumphrey, two touchdowns and 56 yards. Good to see that from the San Diego State rookie, who in real life, not playing so hot. Uh, and Beast Foles here got a rushing touchdown. Favorite receiving Shelton Gibson, five catches, 60 yards. Aguilar at 48. Brent Selleck caught the lone receiving touchdown of the day. Nice to see that. Uh, run blocking, who's gave up sacks? Two from Vitae, one from Hearts. All right, we can work with that. On the defensive side, leading for tackler, went to Nate Jerry. Six total tackles on the day. On sacks, we got two sacks for Derek Barnett. Freak beast. Two sacks for Vinny Curry, a sack for Timmy Jernigan. And no interceptions, unfortunately. But overall, a clean game against the Green Bay Packers. And I'll take it because, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles, I love saying that they're the preseason champs. So let's sum in to this next game against the Buffalo Bills. Where we won in real life. See if we can carry that over into the match. All right, looking at preseason game two. Another very low. Oh, okay, well, this, okay, maybe not dominant performance. But, hey, we won 28-26 to over the Buffalo Bills. A shootout of games. Over a thousand yards total in this game. Buffalo edging us out a little bit, so not the greatest defensive performance that you want to see. Uh, look at the Eagles in particular. Foles, clean game coming as a backup. Like to see that though. With Carson Wentz played a little bit more. 137 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, and that is the key for Carson Wentz to keep the turnovers at zero. Uh, running the ball, Darren Sproles had a good day. 22 touches, 88 yards, and two touchdowns. 42 yards there for Legarrette Blunt. Here's receiving. Torrey Smith caught himself a touchdown. Mac Hollins, the Hollins hype train. The nastiest stiff arm in the business. Got himself a touchdown as well. Who butchered themselves on the offensive line? Three sacks given up by old man Peters. That's incredibly unrealistic. Jason Peters would never give up three sacks in the preseason. And on the defensive side of the ball, we got seven tackles from Tim Jernigan. He also had two sacks on the day as well. Very good to see that. Uh, for Mr. Timmy, and we got an interception and a sack from Sidney Jones, who's back from injury, I guess. You know, I do. I usually do turn off pre-existing injuries, so we will fucking take that, though. Because best believe, Sidney Jones, in my franchise mode, I'm realistically getting him on those low-key Lane Johnson Mexican supplements, and he's going to be ready for this damn preseason. The world is remarkable by the, the kind of coaching staff and the health staff and the medical staff that the Philadelphia Eagles have that Sidney Jones, a man that completely tore his ACL, is back in the second preseason game, getting a sack and interception. Lane Johnson has given him his duffel bag. That's all we saw. That's all the beat reporters of Philadelphia saw. They saw a duffel bag that said Lane Johnson on the side outside of Sidney Jones' locker. Maybe that's a storyline for days to come. We're going to try to keep that on wraps myself, C4 owner, and Doug Peterson. So that being said, City Joe's now back stronger, faster than ever. Getting ready for week three against the Miami Dolphins, where we actually train with them during that week at practice, inner squad practices. Hopefully we can stay healthy and try to go 3-0 on this preseason. All right, take a look at the third preseason game. And unfortunately, the Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl preseason champs title has potentially got ended. By the Miami Dolphins as they beat us 21 to 17 in this ball game. Looking at the Eagles in particular, ooh, Wentz two picks, no touchdowns. Foles two picks, no touchdowns. So that's horrific. That is suicides. I've heard reports from Doug Peterson that there's going to be suicides that make ISIS cry being run at practice next week uh, because of this terrible passing performance. But luckily, Carson Wentz is a religious god, and through Jesus Christ, all things are possible. So he will survive. Uh, running attack, looking pretty good. Sproles, 80 yards and a touchdown. Blunt, 70 yards and a touchdown. Well, 69 yards <laughs> and a touchdown. So that's looking good that the running attack is, but I probably would have you know, really traded not the interceptions for a less than stellar run game. Uh, the receiving yards, nothing too special. I mean, Matt Collins, three catches, 52 yards is all right. And on the defensive side of the ball, Jordan Hicks on the team with seven total tackles. We get a sack from Nate Gary and a sack from Brandon Graham. Let's see what the damn picks on the Dolphins. Dolphins, we got two from backup safety TJ McDonald, Rashad Jones, and Byron Maxwell. Pulling one over the Eagles' eyes once again. Got himself an interception. I'm just going to, you know. Oh, after the suicides are done, we're probably just going to throw this game film out and not worry about it. All right, so it's cut time. It's always cut time. And what we learned from the first little run-through that we did a couple weeks ago 
is that we know there's gonna be some good free agents, some just ridiculous AI cuts. I'm gonna take full advantage of it. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. So it says we need to cut 21. We're just gonna, you know, thin out as many guys as possible so that once the full cuts are, as we head into week number one, we can hopefully get some studs off the waiver wire. So Matt McGloin, I say this with great pleasure. He is cut. He is the reason why in real life I do not even give a shit about the Philadelphia Eagles preseason games after the first quarter because he is horrendous. So Wentz and Beast Fools will be our starters. We have LeGarrette Brunt, Darren Sproles, Donald Pumphrey, Wendell Smallwood, and Byron Marshall here. Uh, for Byron Marshall, you know what? I actually... He's a 60, though. We're going to cut him. Realistic... He is so goddamn agile. He's so... Okay, we're going to move Byron Marshall to the practice squad tentatively. We're not going to... You know, if, if we do need to make cuts... He will certainly get cut. But I think having these four running backs on our roster is going to be best. But then again, if we do remember, Tariq Cohen got cut on the on the Bears story. And if he hits a free agency market, we're going to be bringing him in. Uh, we have no fullback on the roster, which is a little uh, disconcerting. Alshon, Torrey, Hollins, and Aguilar all going to make the roster. Look at here. David Wadford, you're gone. Converted quarterback, you're gone. You, you're gone, bud. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, Treggs. Treggs is gone, even though he didn't hasn't looked horrible in the preseason. Treggs is gone. And then we're going to flip Shelton Gibson to the practice squad. A burner that has some drop issues. And, I mean, you can't not have Paul Primetime Turner on this team in some fashion. So we definitely are going to be trying to look at some wide receivers in free agency as these are only four. I usually want to have at least five guys, maybe even six. I mean, maybe we have to keep those guys around and, you know, find somewhere else to put uh, on that practice squad, but that is what we're starting out with. At the tight end spot, we have Ertz, Selleck, and Trey Burton. You know, because Madden is kind of stingy and they don't want to add the long snapping position, the Magic Man is gone, and Mr. Rick Lovato, sounds like a fucking Elvis Presley impersonator's real name, uh, he's gone. So we have Jason Peters and Dylan Gordon here at left tackle. I'm going to see maybe looking and see if we can get a left tackle in free agency, maybe if one gets cut, and then flipping Dylan Gordon to a fullback role as he was a tight end. A beastly tight end at LSU. Uh, left guard, we have Warmack and Siumalo. That makes sense. Center, Wisniewski, Kelsey, and Josh Andrews. Andrews is gone. He is like the Julian Vandelverd. Whatever. I probably just butchered, butchered that name. Everyone knows. That Julian guy that Philadelphia Eagles constantly would cut and re-sign. I have no idea how he kept staying on the roster. Same goes with Josh Andrews. Uh, Brandon Brooks, Tobin. Okay, Matt Tobin's no longer on the team. I guess we couldn't flip him for any picks, which kind of sucks. So we're going to have to cut Matt Tobin just to try to stay within the, the realm of realism. We have Dallas T Thomas and Daryl Green. Uh, we'll just throw Daryl Green here on the practice squad. At right tackle, we have these guys. Vitae, obviously Lane Johnson. Hooking up our boy Sidney Jones with them supplements. So Taylor Hart, we can't move him to the practice squad. That is... Like, that 7-2 is ridiculous. He has looked horrendous in preseason, and I'm just doing this out of, like, you're gone. He's probably going to get picked up. I mean, you see a 72, 26-year-old right tackle with how Philadelphia Eagles have been doing. Looks like he'll probably get picked up by the Steelers. Um, looking at our defense here, Alex McAllister, Florida Gator bias. I want to hold on to him, so we'll throw him on the practice squad. At right defensive end, I like Steven Means a lot, to be completely honest with you. We'll see if we can hold on to him. We'll see what the cuts look like after that. Um, Hamilton is going to be gone. Thank you. I don't even really know who the hell you are. Destiny Viao. I do like him. I called him in my Eagles mock draft to sign him as an undrafted free agent. But we have so many D-tackles, so we'll throw him on the practice squad. And Gabe Wright. I don't know. I, I like my boy, boy at Bo Allen here, to be honest with you. But he's it's just not he's just not that good in comparison to everyone else. I think they kind of robbed him. I think he needs to have, like, I would have gave Bo Allen a 75 and Gabe Wright a 70. Because we're nitpicking with the ratings, we'll keep that as is. Um, yeah, 4D tackles on the roster. That's good. I decide linebacker Brad have been good. Middle linebacker Steven Daniels is no longer on the roster. Come on, Matt. Throw your shit out. I don't like... I'm not a huge fan of Dodd Sherry, so we'll just get rid of you as well. So we got Joe Walker and Jordan Hicks at middle linebacker. And that's a very underrated Jordan Hicks with an 85 overall. Right side linebacker, we have Michael Kendricks, Nate Jerry, and Camus Gruger hill um, I mean, Gruder Hill's a phenomenal special teamer, but we'll throw, throw him on the practice squad. Look at the secondary. We have Darby, Robinson, Jones, Ron Brooks. Oh, my God, all these guys. All right, CJ Smith is going to be gone. Sorry for Carson Wentz, his old teammate. You're gone. Tay Glover Wright, you're gone. Thanks for coming in. You got two last names. That's too, too much in the budget expense to put all those names and stitch them on a jersey. You're gone. Aaron Grimes, I like you because you're in the CFL, but you're gone. That's why it's so hard to cut you. 
I'm uh, not a fan of... Oh, man, actually, Ron Brooks has some pretty decent looking stats there. I mean, corner one, two, three, four, five. I just like having five corners. So, I mean, just because Patrick Robinson is a very overrated 78, I guess Ron Brooks will be the guy that we're moving on from here. Plus, he does free up $1.2 million in cap. Free safety, I mean, we're going to have to hold on to... I mean, Brent, Corey Graham is so old. Maragos gives us... Terrence Brooks, Jalen Walker, I guess. Okay, we're going to get rid of Terrence Brooks. And then we'll see where we're at in terms of our actual cuts. We're probably a couple short, if I'm being honest with you. No, we're fine. We are absolutely fine. So that is great. We're going to simulate into week number one. We'll take a quick look at the Jets game. And then we'll take a final deep dive on free agency because we assume the AIs are going to make bad cuts. And then we're going to fill out our roster. So let's do so in our final preseason game, we beat the Jets 31 to 23, moving to three and one in the preseason, which is a great spot for Doug Peterson's team. In real life, we're one and one, so hopefully we can finish three and one. And it looks like uh, owner C4, look how creative that was, uh, is real life. You know, we are real life, bro. We're every day, bro. All right, let's take a look at free agents, see what they're doing, and see who got ridiculously cut. As I'm already seeing Ogunjobi and Caleb Brantley once again. So, I'm going to, just so I try to keep it real, but not too absurd, where guys are on practice squads, I'm not, unless someone gets injured during the year, which is kind of real, it doesn't seem like teams really will immediately poach guys on practice squads because of name value. Uh, we're, like guys like Tariq Cohen, who we brought in, because he's on the practice squad, we're going to leave him alone. So just the the, uh, the middle round draft picks that the AI stupidly cut that are straight up free agents, we'll bring them in, and we're going to leave the practice squad guys as is. I think that's mutually beneficial between me and you guys uh, for the viewing experience. But say if Sproles goes down or Wendell Small goes down, I'm telling you, I'm bringing in my boy Tariq Cohen. All right, guys, so as we get ready for our week one opening matchup against the Washington Redskins, it's time to look at our final man roster and our practice squad. And there were some juicy free agents, still a couple guys that, I mean, the AI needs tuning again. I don't know that's something that's eventually going to be passed or what, but it was pretty ridiculous. Some of the players we were able to add on to the roster made a couple tough cuts. The quarterback stays the same with Wentz and Foles. We got Blunt, Sproles, Pumphrey, and Small would be our main running backs this year. Uh, fullback, we moved Dylan Gordon from left tackle to fullback where I think, you know, he's going to transition for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think during fullback sets, we will have him. And then, obviously, we personally do have the luxury. If a left tackle gets injured, we could just flip Dylan Gordon back to the left tackle spot. Uh, but he's going to be a beast lead blocker. We're not going to give him the hand ball every time. Anytime it's short yards, clearly we have Garrett Blunt for that role. But for a lead blocker, that's a lot of meat and a lot of man to try to stop. Uh, look at the wide receiver spot. We have Alshon, Torrey Smith, Matt Collins, Nelson Aguilar. And we're able to get Josh Malone, who was surprisingly released from the Cincinnati Bengals. 6'3", with 90-some speed, was really impressive at Tennessee. Uh, plus, he had just a slight edge over Shelton Gibson and Paul Primetime Turner. So he will be our final wide receiver as it stands right now. Tight end stays the same with Ertz, Selleck, and Burton. Look at left tackle. We have Jason Peters. And we got the Canadian Justin Senor. From Mississippi State, it's clearly senior, but I like calling him senior. So I had to show my Canadian some some love here. And he's a 69 overall rookie that got cut. So welcome to the squad. Uh, left guards, Warmack and Siumalu. Center is Wazniewski and Kelsey. Right guard is Brandon Brooks and Dallas Thomas. And at right tackle, it's Lane Johnson and Hal Vitae. And with the defense, we got Brandon Graham and Chris Long at left defensive end. And right defensive end, we got Vinnie Curry, Derek Barnett, and Deshaun Hall, who was surprisingly released from the Carolina Panthers. Don't know what the hell they were thinking. 22 years old, 73 overall rookie. Thank you very much. We will definitely add him on the team. Uh, defensive tackle, we have Fletcher Cox, Timmy Jernigan, Gabe Wright, Larry Ogunjobi, 75 overall rookie, got cut from the Browns. Makes sense, right? Got to add him to the squad. Uh, I mean, even Caleb Brantley, Gator Bice, was on the Browns practice squad. So I don't know what the fuck they're doing at D-tackle. But maybe at least we're able to reap the rewards here at Ogunjobi. And we have Elijah Qualls, our own rookie here, still holding it down. So, I mean, one more defensive tackle than I probably would have liked. But I feel great with the depth that we have here. Uh, looking at left side linebacker, it's Bradham and Good. Middle linebacker, Hicks and Walker. Right outside linebacker, Michael Kedrick and Alex Anzalone got cut from the New Orleans Saints. Don't know why, but why let someone else pick him up off free agency? Florida Gator Bias, talented linebacker. So definitely good to have him as depth. Plus, with the future with Michael Kendricks being uncertain, could be an eventual starter here at right outside linebacker. In the secondary, things stayed the same. Darby, Darby Robinson, Sidney Jones looking stronger than ever. 
Jalen Mills and Razul Douglas will be our starters at corner. Free safety is Rodney McLeod, and we did decide to move on from Corey Graham, who we didn't really have much ties to, but he still was an 82, or 80 overall, sorry, but he wasn't going to play a lot. And we freed up Chris Maragos, who's a tremendous special teamer. I personally like him in real life, and he's worth a spot, but because special teams isn't really worth a whole lot here in Madden, he freed up like $1.6 million in cap. We are able to get Tedrick Thompson, who I believe was drafted from the Seahawks. We built a free agency, 22 years old, 73 overall. You'd be an idiot to pass that up. At strong safety, Malcolm Jenkins and Jalen Watkins and Sturgis and Donnie Jones as a special teamers. Wrapping up with our practice squad, looking pretty damn good. We got Danny Isadora, rookie from Miami. We have Chase Rulier, rookie from Wyoming. I think Isadora's on the Vikings. Rulier is on the Redskins. Destiny Vallejo, Nate Gary, Camus Gruger Hill, all from the Eagles. We got Nate Hairston, Temple Tough, bringing back a local kid here in the secondary. I have no idea who drafted him. I'm going to guess the Ravens. Uh, McAllister from our own team, Gibson, and Paul Primetime Turner. So I'm feeling pretty good, especially with some keys like these these two guys in particular. I was really high on Chase Rooley. Really. I actually had him in my Philadelphia Eagles mock draft. So that is some depth there at the center spot. So that is our roster as we get ready for the opening week matchup against the Washington Redskins. The first time in our little trial thing. We got body bagged. I think we have... Um, sorted things out you know we're got to play it we're got to see what happens and that will be in episode number two which will be coming out this saturday so hopefully you guys are hyped for the philadelphia Eagles connected franchise mode and entirely this connected franchise mode universe with the ncaa series in pairing with it uh if this first time stopping by don't be afraid hit that subscribe button and until next time it's c4 saying peace out